Welcome to Donaldson's Clean Solutions webinar, Why Do Carboxylates Plug My Filter? I am Jim Doyle, Senior Engineer at Donaldson. This webinar adds to our series examining the most frequent causes of rapid filter plugging. We examine hundreds of filters annually in Donaldson's state-of-the-art labs, and the vast majority of unexpected filter plugging falls into three categories. Uh, biodiesel blends forming glycerin solids, additive blending issues such as cold flow improver misuse, and carboxylates. Carboxylates, a funny word with consequences that can be anything uh, but comical for modern diesel systems. Carboxylates are a phenomenon that is blamed when problems rise, but is mostly mysterious to fuel users. The purpose of this webinar is to shed some light on what carboxylates are, why they form, and most importantly, what can be done to combat them for the end user. From a technical standpoint, Carboxylates are, co are complex, and we are working hard at Donaldson to isolate the different forms and their effects on fuel, fuel filtration, and ultimately, ultimately equipment operation. For today's webinar, we want to just scratch the surface of the chemistry of carboxylates and the reactions that occur. More important is, what can be done to minimize the impact of carboxylates on your equipment? Historically, the most common internal diesel injector deposit material has been identified as a substance called carboxylates or loosely referred to as sodium soaps. Initially, carboxylates were identified as something that built up over time in the injectors, causing sticking and plug nozzles and even loss of power for older unit injector engines. While still a source of injector deposits, for new high-pressure common rail injection systems, carboxylates cause a more severe operational issue, specifically uh, rapid unexpected filter plugging and grinding production to a halt. Carboxylates have been a problem in diesel systems for years, but as was mentioned earlier, they are a much larger issue in modern high-pressure common rail engines. Tolerances in older unit injectors range from 6 to 7 micron, and that meant that the typical 7 to 10 micron f filtration traditionally found on diesel engines provided adequate uh, protection for these older fuel injector designs. In reality, the vast majority of particulate debris found in fuel Roughly 97% of it is actually smaller than 7 microns and was not causing damage to the fuel system or plugging filters. A small portion of the very fine 1 to 3 micron carboxylates may have been caught in a filter or left some deposit on components, but these were not sufficient to cause immediate issues. However, with the latest high pressure common rail technology, the impact of this same fuel solid condition is a game changer. The new high-pressure common rail injectors have 2 to 3 micron open tolerances to go along with significantly higher pressure injection systems. And they are very, very sensitive to 2 to 3 micron particulate. Consequently, new engine fuel systems have filters that need to keep essentially all the 2 to 3 micron particulate and larger out of the injection system to prevent damage. This means secondary fuel filters allow almost nothing to pass. Frustratingly, 2 to 3 microns is right in the range of typical carboxylate solids. The same fuel that contributed to the beginning of a deposit in an old engine will rapidly plug the filters of a new high pressure common rail system. I always like to point out here that the most, uh, most of the issues we see regarding rapidly plugging filters are a direct result of engine requirements for extremely clean fuel. The only way we get extremely clean fuel is with the highest efficiency filtration possible. Fuel manufacturers and suppliers continue to do a professional job of delivering a quality product. It's just that the rules of the game have changed. A fuel that is 100% adequate for an older engine may plug filters on a new system 500 to 1,000 times faster than expected. So what is this stuff? Well, here's the chemistry part we are going to scratch the surface of. There are lots of resources online that can get more into the atoms, molecules, and the compounds of this stuff we just want to give you a very high level idea of what we are dealing with. Carboxylate is a salt or an ester of a carboxylic acid. That is a carbon which is bonded to two oxygens and an organic group and also contains a hydrocarbon chain that is similar to fuel. This compound is more stable if it can take an electron from some something else in the fuel. Commonly in the in the formation of carboxylates that would, that would be an alkali metal. These are a group of metals on the periodic table that donate their electron. 
This includes sodium or potassium, which can be found in diesel fuel. Certain refinery processes or tank bottoms water also contain sodium and can contribute that sodium ion. The carboxylates we are talking about today are highly fuel insoluble materials, meaning once they are formed, they will not re-dissolve into the fuel. The metal carboxylate we are most often seeing is created by a reaction of corro a common corrosion inhibitor chemistry uh, found in diesel fuel and sodium ions in a high pH condition. That is a caustic or basic situation, not an acid condition that you might be thinking of. This reaction can occur at time of fuel manufacture, before transport, or possibly in tanks with high pH conditions in the tank bottom water. The reaction forms a huge amount of tiny particles that tend to stay suspended and float around in the fuel. They are so small, generally one to three microns, that they don't settle out into the, to the tank bottoms and are not captured by traditional levels of filtration. Historically, this is why the deposits on injectors were being created. The seven to 10 micron filters would allow these particles to pass all the way to the unit fuel injectors and over time they would contribute to deposit formation. In the image you see here, you can see the 10 micron scale bar at the bottom, and most all of the carboxylate particles that are trapped in this filter media are far smaller than that scale bar. Now, of course, instead of getting through into the injector, these particles get hung up in the new high, ultra high efficiency filters uh, that they come across. This is a good thing. We want to protect the injectors, but it does cause frustration with plugging filters quickly. In addition to the reaction described previously between corrosion inhibitor and sodium ions in high pH conditions, there is another related chemistry that can form carboxylates in fuels. This reaction generally commences further downstream than the traditional material previously mentioned. This reaction starts with the same common corrosion inhibitor plus a portion of some premium cold flow improver additives. The cold flow improver portion is generally added at the terminal or possibly closer to the end user site. This combination can also generate a suspension of fine and highly insoluble particles, causing rapid filter plugging. So, now we get to the important part of the webinar. We have talked briefly about what carboxylates are and how they are formed. Now let's discuss what you can do to minimize their impact on your operations. Metal carboxylates seem to be generated in very specific conditions that we noted earlier. You need corrosion inhibitor, a salt, typically sodium, and high pH conditions to form them. This form of carboxylates could be generated by conditions at the end fuel user, but most likely they would be coming in with fuel on, in your normal delivery. In reality, these fuels will likely meet all applicable standards and are considered fit for purpose. In reality, it is difficult to prevent the delivery of fuel that may have a carboxylate issue uh, in the fuel. The ingredients required for this reaction are ubiquitous. Corrosion inhibitor is vital to ensure fuel delivery, and the sodium ion uh, and high pH tank environments can be found anywhere around the world. So it is not easy or cheap to prevent the formation of these solids, and once they are formed, they will float right along with the fuel until they reach a high efficiency filter and can load it very quickly. And if that filter is the secondary filter on a modern high pressure common rail engine, it may load far faster than typical, causing unexpected downtime and maintenance. Well, if you can't really prevent them from being delivered to you, the best bet is to prevent them from entering your fuel tank. High efficiency inlet filtration on your bulk storage tanks will prevent insoluble carboxylates in the fuel from getting into your tank in the first place. And keep in mind, carboxylates in the fuel can rapidly plug inlet filtration as well but the problem will stay out of your tank and more importantly, out of your equipment. While many of the fuel insolu insoluble carboxylates are formed upstream of end user tanks, not all of them are. If you have a common high pH uh, tank bottom water environment in your tank, these car carboxylates can certainly form in there, in there as well. But proper tank maintenance and a good breather uh, filter will help minimize the risk of these carboxylates forming in your tank. Filtering the fuel at the outlet of the tank will prevent these contaminants from reaching your equipment and negatively impacting your operations. Again, these filters will plug up if insoluble carboxylates are present in the fuel 
but I'm betting that it's better than having your equipment stopped cold. We spoke about when fuels with certain corrosion inhibitor chemistries interact with premium cold flow improvers. The reaction of these two compounds creates a solid contaminant that will rapidly plug filters. The good news is, end users experiencing this type of issue may actually do something about it. Most fuel has corrosion inhibitor added at the time of manufacture at the refinery. However, cold flow improver, as we noted, is typically added much later, if at all. Not adding cold flow improver will avoid this issue altogether. However, that is not always practical as cold flow improver has benefits if it is used correctly. We have a webinar on the proper use of cold flow improver that you might want to refer to as well. For reasons we are still researching, if the fuel has a premium detergent in it before the cold flow improver is added, it is also far less likely to create these solids. Premium fuel detergents are becoming more common and they may already be in your fuel on delivery. At the time the fuel end user bulk tank, it is important to know what issue is being addressed when dosing more additives. Fuel at the time of delivery is generally fit for use and un an uninformed more is better approach, just adding more additives for the sake of adding more additives. It's not generally recommended by additive suppliers and can lead to the formation of more solids forming more rapidly plugged filters. Typically dealing with these issues before the impact equipment uh, operation is ideal. So fine filtration of fuel is recommended as fuel is delivered or before it is dispensed into equipment. Putting clean and dry fuel into your equipment prevents a ton of operational and maintenance issues before they impact your, your uh, bottom line. Uh, contact your local Donaldson rep for a clean fuel audit today. There is no uh, cost to this service and will help you determine the current cleanliness of your fuel and give you ideas on how to make sure that no matter what fuel you might have, you can always keep your equipment running. Thank you again for taking the time to join us for the webinar today, and thanks to all of you who are taking advantage of MyCleanDiesel.com and have connected with us there. It's, it's a great resource for all things diesel.